Okay, so if you want to understand the fundamentals of chemical uh, equilibrium or collision theory, uh, probably the best way I think of it is roller derby. So for those of you of a certain generation who aren't too terribly sure about roller derby or what it used to uh, be, I'll just show you this little clip. It was kind of basically the wrestling of the 1970s, uh, but what I want you to see right here is they do something called um, a whip, and you're going to see someone in front uh, basically uh, put her hand behind, and the person behind is there. Well, they're going to whip right there. So that person there kind of whipped the other one around. I think I got another clip of this somewhere. The idea of a whip um, somewhere coming up here. Okay, you're going to see another whip come up, not there, coming up right here, watch. So there's a whip right there. And of course, that skinny Minnie Miller getting the whip, this is great. <laughs> yeah, okay, like I said, it was wrestling uh, of the 70s. So we'll hit pause here. And uh, so that's a whip. Um, there's also something in roller derby called a push. So here we go. Nice and low so that you don't get knocked over and you don't get pushed backwards when you push. So you there's push a push. Straight out with your hands. Your elbow nice there and tight. There you go. Slow and she's going to make that whip And there's right the whip you. there. Okay, so what's that got to do with collision theory? Well, what its uh, main idea here. Oh, sorry, I can't do that yet. I also have to do the physics of uh, whatever this called uh, figure skating. So here we go. A backspin is done on the right leg if you're right-handed. Watch how she's spinning and all of a sudden goes a lot faster, then goes a little bit like slower. Great. Okay. So now let's go back to um, our FET program. Let's start with a reset all with a yes, please. And we're looking up here. I'd like an angled shot. And now it's time for chemistry. So what we're looking at is a model of this particle bumping into these two particles that are stuck to each other. And for some reason, if uh, we play our cards right, we can get these particles, these three particles, to rearrange and form this. You can think of this as being a positive thing and a positive thing stuck to a negative thing and the, uh, uh, the, them switching place. I think they call that a single displacement reaction. Okay, so I want you to pay attention over to here because this concept of total energy, that's what I was just talking about with regards to the, um, the physics and the roller, uh, roller derbing and stuff like that. So I'm just going to pull this like this and I'm going to crank it just a little bit like this and we're going to let go. But before I do, you're looking over on the right hand side and you're seeing this green bar and this concept of total energy. So I'll tell you what, first of all I'll just do this and I'm going to hit it just a little bit off kilter so on the angle we're a little bit off to the side and the energy is that green bar. Okay so as these particles uh, float around and bump into each other what you need to see here and you need to be able to read this so I'm going to read this for you and tell you what you need to see. This says that these particles are going to collide and out of the collision is this new formation or arrangement. The green bar says that's how much total energy is available in these things right here. And we're looking right here and we're seeing you need to see two types of energy. You need to see a spinning energy and you also need to be able to see a what we call translational energy. Now this thing could in fact be spinning but we can't see it so we're going to focus on this thing. And what I want you to see is that it's got a directional energy, in other words it's kind of like moving from here to here, and it's also got some spinning energy. And one of the things that you should notice is that it can some, sometimes translate spinning energy into translational energy and vice versa. So now when it's spinning really fast, it's kind of moving across kind of slow. So it's moving across slow. And, um, and of course it's going to take forever to bump into again. So let's go back over to here. So now what this is saying is the green bar is showing you the total amount of energy. The blue bar is showing you how much energy it takes. We call it getting over the hump. But in order for these particles right here, to undergo a rearrangement, there needs to be, and we'll just for the sake of argument, we'll set the highest point here to be 100, 
and we'll set this point right here to be let's say 70. So this picture here is saying there needs to be 70 units of energy between here and here. And the total amount of energy in these two things right here is only like about 25 units of energy. These particles, these three particles, this A and this BC, are never going to become A, B, and C. There's just not enough energy. So let's hit uh, reset. And let's uh, this time make sure that there is enough energy. So I'm going to pull this thing back and we're going to give it actually I tell you what let's give it almost enough energy so we're looking over on the left we're letting go and nothing's happening there and notice in this case I actually set the thing I used angled shot and straight shot so these things were like perfectly lined up so it's not like you know they weren't in correct position or something but we just don't have enough energy let's go reset all reset all and this time let's do the same thing and let's give it more than enough energy and let's see what happens so now what you're seeing is that because there's more than enough energy we're getting this switching from this arrangement here to this arrangement here and then back again and that's because there's another collision happening up here so now let's do a reset all and let's try the same thing. We're going to give it a whole bunch of energy, but we're just going to angle it ever so slightly to stop that back and forth. So here we go. We've got more than enough energy, and I'm just going to turn it off to the side a little bit, and we'll let it go. So notice that even though there's like 100 units worth or 95 units of energy in these things right in here, Notice right there we didn't get a collision in the right spot, so they certainly did collide, but we didn't get any uh, reaction, which is to say, remember, a reaction is a rearrangement of the particles. Again, a collision happens. We're looking right in here. We see a collision, and of course they're not going to collide for a while. Uh, but we can still get collisions, even though now we're reading over here. There's more than enough energy in the system, which is to say, among those three particles. Uh, but they have to collide in order to um, rearrange and the other thing they have to do is be in the right kind of alignment. They also have to have enough energy. So you've got to have the collision, energy, and the alignment. Now if we look at this, what the other thing I want you to see is that you can probably well imagine if we wanted to get some BC forming one of the ways we could do that would be to add more of these gray particles. If we could somehow add more grays, then we would be more likely to encounter a gray and a instance where a gray particle is colliding with these others. So we're going to get a collision here any moment now. Do we get, and we didn't get a reaction. Well, it was a bit of a glancing blow, and so that's kind of an example of the orientation. Uh, it has to be right. Okay, so let's reset all. Let's reset all and let's switch to a many collision situation. Do I want to switch to that now? 